Hello my lovely people, it is Grace here, Bikedonia, and today I want to talk about the City Adventure boots. So this is a lovely brand new pair of the City Adventure 2s, the second generation of these boots. And when I first started out on my trip five years ago, I set out with a pair of the first generation, the City Adventures. Now let's talk about what's really good about these boots, what's bad about these boots, and really importantly, how well they last. All right, what's really good about them, they have this structured and hinged ankle protection. Now, a lot of adventure boots, they're designed to be more comfortable, they're designed so you can walk around in them. And in aid of that, often they have really soft ankles. You don't really get that ankle protection that you want off-road in particular. If you're doing mixed on-road, off-road, you still need that ankle protection. And a lot of them don't have it. So I am a massive fan of this ankle protection. I have crashed many times in my city adventures over the years and they have really held up really well. Um, the other thing that's really nice about the hinged ankle protection, like I say, the hinging, you can bend your ankle. What this means is that you can ride any kind of bike in these boots. I've ridden an R1 in these boots. Today I rode my CBR with these boots, as well as riding, you know, my KTM 690 Enduro. They are actually absolutely versatile. So that is really great. So hinge ankle and structured ankle protection, these are things I love about these boots. The other thing I like is they're a really nice narrow fit. I have a long skinny foot and these fit me really well. Um, normally I wear a women's size 38 and these boots are a size 41. So size up a little bit when you buy these boots, but they are a nice slim fit, which can often be hard to find. Now, the other thing that's cool about these boots is they are Gore-Tex lined. So they're waterproof and they breathe. So this is super nice. Um, it's always nice to not have soggy wet feet. However, my first pair of boots, they did not stay waterproof forever. So they were waterproof for about a year and a half, two years, and then the Gore-Tex lining didn't do its thing anymore. I felt that cold water seeping into my boots and it was a sad day. So it may be possible that the second generation is gonna last better. There may be improvements to the design that are gonna give them more longevity um, from that waterproofing perspective. I'm yet to find out. But the first generation, waterproofing didn't last forever. So now that we've talked about waterproofing and how long that lasted on my first generation City Adventure boots, let's talk about generally how long these boots last. So really for me, it was about two years before the first generation, the City Adventures started to fall apart. So I, as I said, the waterproofing failed, but then subsequently the stitching just disintegrated. The stitches actually came apart. So all the seams started to come apart and the glue failed and the soles started to fall off. So I had to get my boots thoroughly restitched and re-glued. And that was a process that I went through again and again, maybe uh, every six months. Uh, over the uh, last three years, I would take my boots down to the boot maker on Sutep Road and be like, hey man, can you fix these boots? I need them and I don't have another pair. So they don't last forever, but on the upside, they are made out of leather and they are really eminently repairable. So unlike some motocross boots, which have a lot of plastic on them, you really, you know, bits break, the buckles break and you can't repair them. These ones, the bits that failed were repairable. So the stitching and the glue got all that redone. And for three years, I just kept reconstructing my boots every time they fell apart. Impressively, these plastic bits, which are pretty much the same on the first generation, these plastic buckles did not fail. And I am in Southeast Asia and I've been in Southeast Asia for the last five years and notoriously, plastics perish and fail and just disintegrate in this climate here. It's really humid, it's really hot, and yeah, your plastics just don't last. So even on really high quality motocross boots and that, you'll often have the problem that your buckles, your plastic uh, buckles like this, they'll just snap and then you'll need a new pair of boots. That never happened on my cities and I am really impressed by that. So that's basically my summary. They don't last forever in a perfect condition. 
However, the real deal breaker bits, these plastic buckles, the, the fasteners, those bits, they never failed on me in five years of use and abuse. And so I was able to keep repairing those boots, keep restitching them, keep regluing them and keep wearing them. They are also really comfortable and easy to put on. And this is really important because there's always the temptation, you get lazy and you think, oh, I'm not going to wear my gear today. But it turns out that these boots are actually quicker and easier to put on and take off than most of my shoes, certainly anything with shoelaces. And so it just becomes a no brainer to always wear these anytime you're looking at your bike, anytime you're going to head out and go down to the shops on the bike, I just step into my cities and they're super comfortable and off I go. I hope that gives you a little bit of extra information to help you decide between all of the boots that are available out there on the market. Anyway, a massive shout out to Axel's Bike Shop in the Netherlands for hooking me up with this lovely pair of new boots. Thank you so much and thank you also to my wonderful friends Zeta and Kevin who mulled these boots halfway around the world for me. Thank you so much. It is an absolute pleasure to have dry feet again. Thank you guys. Enjoy and I'll catch you later.